recently on Wild Reborn. Don't forget to like and subscribe. They said it was extinct. They said we'd never see it again. But now, scientists are bringing back the Tasmanian tiger. And no, this isn't a sci-fi movie. It's real. Like Jurassic Park meets Tasmania. Real. But here's the twist. Some people say it never went extinct in the first place. So what are we actually bringing back? A lost species or just a ghost that never left? This isn't just about cloning a cool striped animal. This is about reversing extinction and maybe opening a very weird, very furry Pandora's box. Meet the thylacine, AKA the Tasmanian tiger. It wasn't a tiger. It wasn't a dog. It was a marsupial. That's right, pouch and everything. It once roamed all over Australia, but by the time Europeans showed up, it was mostly chilling in Tasmania. Blamed for killing livestock, settlers started a massive hunt, backed by the government. By 1936, the last known thylacine died in Hobart Zoo. Tragic? Yep. Avoidable? Also, yep. Turns out it probably didn't even eat sheep. Oops. Another great example of humans solving a problem that didn't exist with extinction. Now, fast forward to today. Enter Colossal Biosciences, the company that wants to bring back mammoths, dodos, and yes, the thylacine, using ancient DNA, CRISPR, and some wild synthetic biology, they're working on reviving this lost marsupial. How? They're using the fat-tailed dunnart, the thylacine's closest living marsupial cousin, as a genetic template. Basically, nature's 3D printer, but for extinct animals. So what was this creature really like? Let's break it down. Adult thylacine stood about two feet tall at the shoulder, six feet long nose to tail, and weighed between 35 to 70 pounds. Think medium-sized dog with tiger stripes and a kangaroo pouch. It hunted small animals, kangaroos, birds, bandicoots. Probably did some scavenging too. And despite the bad PR, it likely wasn't the sheep-slaying menace settlers thought it was. Its closest living relatives? Not wolves, not cats, but the Tasmanian devil and numbat. All in the same weird marsupial gang. They likely lived in pairs, raised two to four pups in backward-facing pouches, and were fiercely protective. When they disappeared, Tasmania's ecosystems changed. Some prey boomed. Others, like scavengers, lost a rival. Bringing the thylacine back could rebalance that, or totally mess it up. Nature doesn't like reruns. Here's where it gets spooky. Since 1936, there have been over 1,200 reported sightings of thylacines, photos, videos, eyewitness accounts. Are they real? Are they hoaxes? Are people just seeing weird dogs? Some say the thylacine never truly went extinct, that it's hiding deep in the Tasmanian wilderness. So, if we're already de-extincting an animal that might still be alive, what exactly are we doing? Saving a species or cloning a legend? So here we are. Science can do it. Colossal is doing it. But should we? Nature has moved on. New animals, new ecosystems. Inserting an extinct predator could have ripple effects no one can predict, but it could also be our redemption story. Proof that we can undo even the worst mistakes. A symbol for conservation and hope. Or maybe it's just the start of something bigger. Because if we can bring back one extinct animal, who's next? And what happens if we bring back the wrong one? If you thought the Tasmanian tiger was wild, wait till you see what's next. Because on Wild Reborn, this is just the beginning. The age of extinction is over, and the age of resurrection is here. From the dire wolf, the world's first real de-extinction, to the return of the mighty woolly mammoth stomping back through the ice. And yes, even the dodo, the legendary bird we all thought was just a joke, is coming back to life. We're diving deep into the science, the secrets, and the strange future we're building, 
one species at a time. So if you're into ancient predators, real-life Jurassic parks, and the weirdest science on the planet, subscribe.